Okay, welcome back to the Bradford Hotel for the uh, mixed doubles final here at the Bradford Arena for uh, what should be a cracking match. So without further ado, let's get the players out and uh, fresh from his victory in the, in the doubles final, it's Clint Ianson with his partner, Deb Birchall. Clint, one title in the bag, looking to make it two? Yeah, it'd be lovely to do the double, yeah. And uh, Deb, playing well as a, as a partnership? Yeah, we are, yeah, uh, really solid, so I feel very confident, it's good. And what do you know about your, your opponents, if anything? My, um, I don't know a great deal, to be honest. I know Kirsty because she um, lives in Nottingham, but I don't really know much about John, to be fair. OK, and Deb, uh, mixed doubles, a new event uh, this year, enjoying it? Yeah, it's brilliant. I think everyone that's entered has enjoyed it and it's been a cracking event to play in um, and I can't wait to get stuck in. OK, well, well played the pair of you. Good, good game. Deb Birchill, Clint Ianson. And their opponents from Wales, Johnny Bushnell and Kirsty Davis. Jonathan, uh, what would it mean to, be, to become world world double world mixed doubles champion? Yeah, it's to be uh, very nice indeed, especially if Kirsty grown up together through uh, the Welsh pool. So yeah, it'd be good. And Kirsty must be playing well as a pair. Five nil victory in the semi finals against uh, the Lucases. Yeah, we just took our chances when we got them, so hope to do the same. And expecting a tough battle against uh, Deb and uh, Clint. Definitely, yeah, but main thing for us, we're just going to focus on ourselves and hopefully get out chances and same as we did in the semis. Okay, well, play well, play well. Yeah. Kirsty Davis and Johnny Bushnell. <laughs> the man in the middle is Scott McMillan, who'll be overseeing proceedings. Uh, just a reminder, it's the best of nine frames for the title. If I had the energy to smile uh, Dave Chesham, I probably would. But, uh, <laughs> just admit I'm flagging a little bit now. Uh, as we come to the uh, the last final of this week. And, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's been an interesting week, I think. Uh, with the changing cloth and, uh, you know, the, the event itself being a little bit bigger and this one or two other changes that we've made. Hopefully you've all enjoyed it. And uh, whether you've been here playing, uh, watching, or sat at home watching the stream, um, yeah, we hope you've enjoyed it because you know that's the main thing. So, this is going to be uh, uh, it is going to be an interesting match. This, uh, I mean, Clint and Deb, obviously, big favourites. But uh, Johnny Bush and Kirsty Davis, um, they've been, uh, apart from 1 5 4, they've, they've been uh, smashing their opponents up. So um, they're obviously working well as a team. But um, well, we'll just have to see how it unfolds, won't we? But um, it's the best of nine, so it's quite a short race. But um, let's hope they put on a feast for us. That's a nice shot from Clint. Good shot from Clint to develop the awkward yellow. But yes, yeah, it's, um, it's a nice end for uh, from what's been uh, a great week. So no doubt uh, we'll have a little bit of a rest, and then. Uh, 
next couple of months we'll start planning how we make next year's bigger and better that's how soon we uh, we start planning and um, you know, some of the uh, I mean it's mostly been positive but you know anyone who knows me knows I'm uh, I'm never happy <laughs> and uh, we're going to try and uh, make sure that uh, it's even better next year. Thanks for the comments, everyone. Yep. Um, there's no doubt about it. It is tough. It is very tough. But, um, you know, we've got a great team here. And uh, it's not, you know, it's not just about me, but um, there's a lot of unsung heroes who, uh, you know, may may not have official positions, but um, you know, without them, it wouldn't be possible. So uh, it's all down to having a great team that are all are all working the right way and uh, working together. No egos, no, you know, no ulterior motive, no, no other agendas apart from trying to make uh, the IPA and Blackpool as as big and as good as it uh, possibly can be. So hopefully you can see that you know what we're trying to do, and uh, you know we don't get everything right. Of course we don't, but um, what we do do is learn and. Uh, and try try our best to improve. Yep, thanks to, <laughs> thanks to those that have just messaged me uh, regarding the post that I just put on for the doubles. I did put uh, Jordan Shepherd, not Jordan Church. I've changed that. So thanks for that. That's uh, that's how long a week it's been. Can't tell me shepherds from me churches. So great start from. Uh, Flint and Deb. I think it's a uh, testament to, uh, to 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 these players. You know, like Deb and Clint. You know, their primary focus would have been their respective individual events, and obviously they're going to be really disappointed that uh, you know they've not lifted their respective titles this year but yet yeah, they've uh, knuckled down and uh, you know worked their way through to the final oh that's bad break from uh, Johnny Bush so I think it's you got to tip your hat off to them uh, for the professionalism that they've shown to reach the final and they're both you know no disrespect to Kirsty and, and Johnny uh, they, but they both had uh, you know very good chances to to lift the singles titles. Of course, Kirsty uh, is a world ex world champion uh, in world rules, so um, plenty of experience there. And Johnny Bush, he's he's one of those players that you know just goes under the radar a little bit, but what a player! He is a very good player on the tour this year, but uh, maybe a lot of people don't know him. But he is—he is a cracking player.
Some good foot to Kirsty and John on the first frame. Um, no, that was definitely Deb and Clint. Yeah, there's quite a few people here. It's um, good to see. Good to see uh, people staying on to uh, support support the players and support the event. Yeah, most people, uh, you know, have headed uh, headed back home, and understandably so. But uh, yeah, certainly more than last year. I think we had about two in the cleaner last year. Oh, he's over over overcut it. So. Chance for Kirsty and uh, Jonathan. It's me getting it wrong. One nil to uh, Bushnell and Davis. And with a golden chance for two nil. Spot there from so Kirsty just looking where she wants to uh, try and put the white. Nice cueist, can tell the way she dresses the ball, gets through the ball. See a lot more of Kirsty and World Rules in the uh, ball rules over the uh, coming months and years. So that's 2 0. Yeah, she's certainly a cutest, does it? Uh, I mean. There's a lot of these women that uh, I've not seen before, and I'll tell you what, these women can play. Uh, impressed with, obviously, Colette Henriksen uh, winning the uh, the ladies' event, but also the Anne Evans, her opponent, who hadn't played for seven, eight years. You know, she just got down and punched them in, and you can, you can sort of tell, and she gets rid of her ring rust. She's going to be a danger to anyone. Obviously, Deb we know about, two-time winner. Uh, and it's the first time I've seen Kirsty Davis, and again, you can tell she's a cueist. So, um, you yeah, know, women's game, very strong. And lots of other good players out there that, um, oh, has that got a nice nudge? They're going to go in? Yes, it's gone in. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, and there's, there's one or two others out there. I mean, Shauna Lucas, obviously. Great player, two-time runner-up. 
there's a few others as well. And uh, all bodes well for the future of the women's game. out there we just need to uh, we need to see them get them out get them in these competitions there's not um, uh, a women's section of the tour as such on the IPA uh, but we are looking at options and we've asked the ladies to uh, come up with some options and proposals and we'll see what uh, what we can do to help promote and uh, oh, just made it but you know like the toy you've got to start small and, and build it up but uh, I think there's certainly an opportunity there in the longer term we have to try and develop uh, a ladies professional setup I think we're uh, you know we're a bit away from that yet in all honesty but it's certainly a possibility in, in years down the line Ensign <laughs> and Birchall are off the mark Can't be a shootout in the mixed doubles because it's the best of nine. <laughs> but uh, no, I don't think it's right. Maybe, maybe in the future. Who knows? But uh, I don't think it's right at the moment. It's the, you know the first time we've run this event, so again, it's it's in its infancy. So let's see uh, how it develops over the next few years. his break. Do I like how she queues up? <laughs> Amazing. Yes, yeah, Tsunami, you, uh, you hit the nail on the head. Every event has got a different format, therefore its own identity, and that's that's definitely key as we, we develop the tournament, the sport, etc. We can't have just loads of the same thing. So, um, little differences, I think, is a good thing. Yeah, a lot of 
people saying they've got to descend in. I mean, to be honest, it's actually, it's felt like it's gone really quick. Um, didn't seem two minutes ago we were starting up on the Tuesday, and uh, here we are Sunday night, and uh, with the last final. But um, like I said, hope you've all enjoyed it, and uh, you, know, you can see us uh, all in action this weekend, and then next weekend in Thornbury the World Series qualifiers, and then two weeks after that it's uh, the start of a hectic uh, tour schedule. Uh, where we start at Cardiff, and uh, we'll be bringing you uh, three days of uh, non-stop, uh, non-stop action from there. You can come and watch any of our events; they're all free. So, if there's one within a drive, then uh, yeah, come down, introduce yourself, say hello, buy me a beer. I'm always ready for a beer. And, um, yeah, just go enjoy, enjoy the atmosphere. The tour this year is going to be, it's going to be electric, I think. Um, I think the, particularly the Saturday nights and the final of the Open, I think, uh, I think they're going to be great. The event at Newcastle at St. James's Park, a bit of a first for us. I think that's going to be great as well. You know, hopefully everyone uh, can you know, shares the same views as me that you know, pool's exciting again. You know, we're trying to create excitement, create enjoyable watching, and uh, yeah, that's what it's all about. I think the uh, the formats, um, particularly the open format, have been really good and really pleased with uh, how how the matches uh, have been with with the formats. I mean, we've seen you know if you put it down, the best of five sets, each set best of best of seven, you're potentially best of thirty five. So that sounds like a long match, but in the set in the set format. It's it's incredible, you know. You can be three nil, three one up. We saw it time and time again, and uh, people three nil, three one up, and and losing the sets. So uh, I think that uh, as a player, it's not great because every frame is absolutely critical. But as a, I think as a fan of pool and as a viewer, I think that's uh, really been a success. So Cardiff is the uh, the last weekend of, uh, of February. For anyone who's uh, interested in uh, coming down, start Friday morning. I think around ten o'clock. I think, and uh, we'll be going right through to Sunday night. Probably about ten o'clock again as well. I can't quite focus on it my eyes are a little bit uh, tired epic tournament congratulations and what what are our goals to develop further over the next few years 
Well, we've just got to keep building. Um, obviously, you know, we want bigger. Uh, oh, great shot. Uh, ultimately, what we want to do is to develop the, pr the professional game. That is what we are tasked with doing. And, um, you know, we need to attract the big sponsors, you know, to get some uh, some good money in into the game. And uh, I think we've got every chance of achieving that. And um, obviously the choral story is, is pretty well documented. But I think what, what it demonstrates is that um, we are ripe for uh, potential sponsors and investors. Uh, we're a good, at the end of the day, every sponsor, investor wants a return. You know, they're not just going to give you money for free and because we think we should have it. You know, they, if they're, they want to know that they're going to sell more of their product. Oh. So, you've got to provide value, and ultimately, it's about a numbers game. So, how many people are watching the stream? How many people are hitting the website? Um, all those sort of things are important. So, the fact that the stream numbers are going up is is important. It's all, it's all ammunition as such that we can uh, we can take to sponsors to say, look, we you know we can offer value. And you know, the last sort of twelve eighteen months, uh, we have we've got to that position where we can we can offer value, real value to sponsors. And um, so that's what we need to do, and um, that's what we're trying to do. And uh, you know, that will help us then take the game to where we want it to be. So, you know, building those quality events. You know where where players are winning five figure checks uh, at, at every event, but um, you know we've in the absence of a, a multimillionaire coming and saying here you go, you know we've got we've got to try and build it the right way. So it's you know gradual improvement, just incremental changes, incremental improvements, build the product, and um, you know it's finding the right company at the right time all the right companies at the right time and uh, you know I do genuinely believe it will happen a little bit careless there from Deb so we keep working we keep working until we get we get to that point and then if we do somebody else can, can have a go because I can go put my feet up then but um, but yeah you know the tour will be the tour <coughs> and uh you know, we've got um, a lot of decisions to make over the coming months and years about what do we do with the tour, how do we develop it. And a lot of that will depend on, on sponsorships and, and things like that. You know, how big do we want to make the pro numbers? Do we just want to have a separate pro tour and amateur, amateur tour and some sort of relegation and promotion? There's a whole host of uh, of questions. You know, World Series, that's important. We've got to develop events abroad, so we need to work on those events and make those bigger and better. Uh, and and the World Championships, of course, is something that uh, we want to uh, want to build as well. And it could be, you know, in in a few years that it may be just a professional only World Championship, which would then differentiate it from. Uh, say the BI World Championships but um, you know these are all things for the future and um, we've got to consider all options really because uh, things can change very quickly so we know where we want to go and uh, the speed at which we get there depends on various things Adrian, flick cross first. Glad you enjoyed it. Hopefully, see you again soon. Yeah, Danny the cloth. I mean, it was. 
it was a risk to a certain extent uh, but if you believe in what you're doing and you believe in that the product is right and the change is right for the right reasons and you can educate people as to why you're doing it then I think people will be more understanding well that's, that's a cracking shot and you know we've gradually introduced this cloth over the last few years from a last man standing to world series and now to all the IP events so it's been a gradual introduction and you know it's well documented you know we've covered it on the stream all week as to, as, as to why we've done it and um, you know the I think the majority uh, of players have absolutely enjoyed playing on it and um, and yeah we, we, we do believe it's the future of black ball yeah there could have been you know big player rebellions but you know you know, I'm a player as well, and I know this cloth is great. And uh, I did figure that uh, most people would like it. And the feedback that we've had from the World Series that the cloth is great as well. So, oh, that's well played. That's a great block. Three one to Bushnell and Davis. Yeah, that Kirsty Davis can play. She's a player, definitely. Yeah, Fab's 8, 804, make sure you get them lottery tickets on and uh, remember um, remember us when your six numbers come in. So now I'm just saying, what about a junior tour? <laughs> well... I could do it full time, the job, and it would pay my mortgage. And uh, we could look at all the options. But um, you know, if we can secure, you know, the uh, the coral deal or a you know, similar type sponsor, which would then make it uh, a full time job for me, then we would be uh, looking at all sorts. But you know, we all have to work, unfortunately. Paul is a, a love, not uh, doesn't pay your bills. Although it might pay Craig Marsh's bills for the next few weeks. But, um, you know, it's not at that point yet. So, um, there's a whole host of things that we'd like to do. But, um, unfortunately, time and resources don't allow at this point in time but uh, like I say things can change very quickly What is the hybrid cloth made of? More beige or slick like speed cloth? Well, it's not slick. It has got a texture to it uh, when you put your hand on it. Um, so what it's made of? Well, it's made of wool. Um, after that, I'm not te technical enough to know, but... Um, I do know that it's more difficult to make napped cloth than it is to make uh, this type of cloth. And therefore, this type of cloth is easier to copy. So there may well be uh, cheaper versions of this available soon. But uh, my advice would be uh, stay well clear because you won't get the same quality. And then you won't be playing in the same conditions of what the tour is. So I think this is one of them where you do need to by the proper product. I 
Bronny's tuning in. Bronny will be uh, on the top table for, for next season. Her and Paul Bev, the dream team. They'll be uh, going to have their hands full this year, I tell you. You've got your shirt sorted, Bron. So, uh, I think there's an unlucky error there where the white landed from Kirsty's shot, but. So, it's advantage uh, by Hanson and Birchall this frame. They need to get back in this match, they don't want to lose this one and go 4 1 down in a race to 5. Just to uh, let people know that uh, yeah, we announced the winner of the uh, Chase 9 break queue yesterday. I think the gentleman's name is Galvin McDermott. Not sure if he's on the stream, if he wants to say hello. Don't be shy, you've just won a brand new exclusive queue. So we'll be, uh, if not, we'll be emailing him this week and uh, sending that out to him. In case you missed it, it was shot 8, Scott Gillespie took 53% of the vote. Don't iron this cloth. You just you just pad it. Um, it's sort of coated in a in a spill guard coating. So um, when you wipe it with this pad, it absorbs the chalk dust. It doesn't rub it into the cloth. Ooh, that's awkward, but should be okay. It's all to do with friction, apparently. If you want to uh, hear a different commentary, we've got um, Live Sports FM here, radio, stream radio station, who are covering the event. The guys at Jonathan's at the side of me is uh, describing the shots. It's a pool on the radio, who would have thought? And if you can have tennis and golf, you pretty much have pool. Yeah, good shot, Deb. So this for three two. I think it'd be fitting, wouldn't it, if this went to a deciding frame. I think we need that. top ready <laughs> yep there's certainly no missing the uh, IPA officials at, uh, at an event in the distinctive orange tops it's definitely not speed cloth you know I've seen that comment made many many times a million percent it's not speed cloth the and the best way I can describe it, it is a hybrid and uh, it plays a little quicker than normal, but it is not speed cloth by a long stretch. Yep, it's napless. There's no nap on it. But um, it is speed cloth, it's not. It just plays at a nice 
pace and you know because it's it's got more grip you know the shots you can play are, uh, it's opening up new new uh, new options for the players they've got a bit of adapting to get used to sort of the doubles you know cuz just straighten up a little bit if you hit it at pace um, but you know that it's just a little nuances that uh, people are just going to have to get used to but um, and they will you know some of the cushions slide a touch but uh, you know it's just it's just slightly different to the green but you know the advantages and reasons for change are many which is why we've done it Prize money at Cardiff. Um, I think in total is about twenty grand at each at each tour event. So uh, three grand the winner of the main event. Um, I can't remember what the amateur is. It's either a thousand or twelve hundred. And the pro event, two thousand something. I honestly can't remember. It's all on the website if anybody wants to know. But uh, I think the total pot for each tour is around about twenty k. So, uh, plenty of uh, plenty up for grabs. There has been uh, quite a few dry breaks today, but I think that's just how it is. Um, we saw plenty of uh, breaks, uh, you know, putting from the break yesterday, and. Uh, it's just how it goes. Nobody pops all the time. The cloth is called uh, Simonis 861 in powder blue. Available from uh, Lifestyle Leisure. Who are based in Stockport. So if you're interested in the cloth, give them a call. It's uh, And Stan McKenna will be at the other end of the phone and he will give you all the Help and advice that you need. So yeah, it's called eight six one, not eight sixty. That's a different one. It's eight six one. is a big shot. That looks close. That is a tremendous pot. Tremendous pot. Tie things up, and there it goes. Three frames all. So we're now in a best of three for the title. So who's going to come out on top in this uh, final event? Well, 
I think the cloths have held up pretty well, to be honest. They've had uh, plenty of matches on, and they all just look <laughs> as if they've not been used. So um, we are told that the cloths are you know, pretty long-lasting. So, um, so yeah, we'll just have to... Uh, I mean, no one really knows, I don't think, because the cloth's never been used. But um, the stream table's still looking great. Good break from Deb. Oh, that was a nice bump out. At the end of the year, we sell all the tables off after the Brighton event. So if anyone uh, is interested in... Uh, the stream table and there's been a lot of interest in that already um, somebody wants to pay deposit on it but, um, so yeah if you're interested in uh, securing any of the tables and you want to uh, reserve one then uh, if you send an email to table tech that's table and t-e-c-h table tech at ipa pool dot com and then um uh, Louis, who's our table main, main table technician, he looks after all the tables and the balls, all that sorts, and all the equipment. He uh, he can uh, he'll reply to you. I do expect uh, all the tables to go pretty quickly, so you can reserve one uh, with a twenty five percent deposit if you're interested. So um, yeah, just uh, oh. Just tried to uh, pinch a bit with the angle and disturb the ball. All the pricing and stuff, yeah, you need to speak to Louis about. He'll uh, he'll advise on all of that that side of things. for the uh, the skill shop just didn't quite pull it off but it's not a bad leave to be honest tied the black up and got this bottom bag covered as well so going to be interesting well, now they attack this Cheers, world champion. Just being interviewed by our radio colleagues at the side of me. just you know overall it's all pretty much come to plan I mean a few things didn't quite 
have not, not quite gone as we'd hoped, but generally things that are not being in our control. So a classic one is, and I hope he's not listening, but some of the trophies came and they were engraved 2016. So obviously that wasn't great. Um, so there's a few other bits and pieces like that that um, you know we, we couldn't have predicted that didn't quite go, but just overall the, the, the general event... Um, you know, we're going to finish on time despite, you know, some slow matches earlier on. And, um, but I think, I think the Saturday night, moving the final to the Saturday night, I guess, and, and the great crowd we had watching, who were treated to an absolute spectacle from Craig Marsh and Simon Fitzsimmons. So, um, yeah, that was, that, that was, that was up there. Oh, it's overcut. Oh, it's gone in. It's gone in. I didn't think that was going to go in. Yeah, it certainly wasn't the fire alarm at uh, half two uh, Friday morning. Or well, Saturday morning it would have been. Yeah, that was uh, <laughs> one of them things, isn't it? What can you do? Outside of your control. Soon I was listening to the uh, radio commentary and uh, the stream commentary at the same time. Yep, you need uh, a few pairs of ears. So, Kirsty to break. We saw earlier, he's got an excellent break. I like how she cues. Impressive. Launch that. Anything going? Not this time. This is their uh, attempt for the uh, for the win. Just one obvious area to uh, to develop. So just to remind you, if you uh, want to keep up with everything IPA related, then uh, make sure you uh, like us on Facebook. Also on Twitter. Oh, we're not very good at Twitter yet. And of course the website, and you can catch all the uh, all the videos. 
from this week, all the great matches that we've uh, been privileged to watch uh, on our YouTube channel. Just uh, search IPA Pool and you'll find us. And there's there's um, plenty on there from the last few years. So they've just got to uh, be sensible, this frame. Bushnell and Davis in complete control. So uh, trying to uh, get them into position to go for the finish. That's a good hit. Fortunately, just knocked it onto uh, the top rail. So, but uh, puts a little bit of pressure on. Mm -hmm. 
I think I'd have been tempted to take the one down the rail. You've still got to attack. You know, you can't uh, just think you're going to get two every shot. And uh, So, yeah, I think, uh, I think possibly the uh, wrong shot selection there. to bump onto these two on the right hand side just to make sure that uh, the, the snookered behind uh, that red that's uh, just above the uh, black spot Some more twists and turns. Dave will just about start packing up his cameras. Thought that was it. But no. Thirty seconds. Well, she played the snow cup, but uh, got the pop. So that's interesting now, I think. Assuming that red, uh, well, it's, if that red goes in the middle, then, then I think they've got to go for, the, go for the jugular. Nowhere to hide now. He's looking at the safety shot, I'm not sure about that. a total snow cap. Arith do provide all the balls. I've done for uh, five years now. Delighted to uh, have that relationship with them. Is that white going? It's okay. So now, I think they've got to go now. I think they'll probably put this one in the right corner, two cushions, and maybe just try and take that one near the middle out. ASAP. I don't think they want to leave that till, till the end because they're going to need absolutely plumb position on it. And I think taking the one in the right corner does give them that opportunity. Between the gap, that's unlucky. 
That is unlucky. If she had just glanced the black, then the white would have uh, just um, nudged onto the red and bobbed it over the pocket, but uh, fine margins. a good shot hit that well which shot I think I think the correct shot is the middle of the three but it's the harder of the pop used to cue this well and has just a bit pacey bit of adrenaline there A foot shorter and uh, would have been ideal. So I suspect he's going to uh, screw this in. Side cushion. This looks pretty good. Yeah, that's okay. He's just got to, uh, I say just. <laughs> so, I, mean, I think on these cloths, because of the grip, definitely just screw it back. Somewhere near the middle bag. Yeah, good shot. So this to uh, tie things up. Pressure black. There it goes. Uh, we're into a sh we're into a deciding frame. So, what's your money on now? So, quite fitting, really. Last final, last frame. People would think we'd scripted this, wouldn't they? <laughs> Bit like last year, deciding frames, shootouts, just something about uh, IPA World Finals. Drama everywhere you look. So the customary handshake, plenty to break. Referee Scott McMillan sets the clock going. Where's that white going? Oh, it's been punched twice enough. But look at the balls, there's problems everywhere. So they're going to plant this yellow. And they're going to stay on yellow. Well, they need to put yellow, but that's what they want. Well, they're not dollies because... Uh, this is this could be tricky. If she's gonna try and move it, I'll play on it. Just got into the white a little bit too much. That middle bag must have been uh, must have looked huge in that shot. I 
we saw in the uh, in the final frame of the seniors Mark White had uh, first chance and we all thought he was going to get them but it's a bit of adrenaline so big shot he'll be hoping for in or oh he's, he's, that's a terrible shot now then they've uh, opened the door wasn't one of his best ones skill I think he's just going to put this and try and move the one on the right rail to leave himself the red into the left centre corner can he play it right looks good looks very good looks very good that's will be beating just a little bit faster now Check it off the cushion. So it could all be about this shot. A few deep breaths from Deb as she walks around the table. She knows the winning post is near. The shoulders start to tighten up a bit. The heart starts pumping a little bit faster. Pockets get smaller. Balls get bigger. Just the usual. Where's that white going? He's got the plant. Where's the white going? He's going to leave the black into the right centre for Clint. 30 seconds. 30 seconds called. Oh, it just went in. <laughs> so, Clint for the title. Deb can't look. There it goes. What a great end to uh, what has been a great week of pool. I hope you've all enjoyed watching, enjoyed the stream, enjoyed the chat. 
been great chatting with you all, meeting with you all. And, um, yeah, hope you've enjoyed it. And um, we're going to do a bit of a presentation. Have a chat with the winners and losers. And, um, and we'll see you all soon. So thanks for joining us. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I think that was a fitting end to what has been a, a fitting great week of pool. So, uh, first of all, round of applause for all four players for what uh, was a tremendous match, played in, uh, in great spirit. Unfortunately, there has to be a loser, so let's introduce our runners-up, which is Johnny Bushnell and Kirsty Davis. Great final, unfortunately, just didn't quite happen, but you must be pleased with the week. Yeah, pleased with the week, uh, definitely. I think the break slowed us down a little bit there, but um, yeah, it's been good. It was a nip and tuck in the final, one, play, one team up, one, play, one team down, it was, could have gone either way. Yeah, definitely, took our chances, a little bit of a bad run, I think, but they played really well. But enjoyed the mixed doubles experience overall? Yes, but good to be back to Black Bull. And great for Black Ball that, you, that you're here. And uh, back next year to maybe go one step further? Yeah, we'll play a uh, big time, yeah. OK, well, well played. Unlucky, but well played. Great final. Kirsty Davis and Johnny Bushnell are runners-up in the mixed doubles. But our winners from England, it's Clint Ianson and Deb Birchill. A double-double? Yeah, it's nice, yeah. Very nice. Yeah, great to be uh, the first uh, IPA World Mixed Doubles Champions. Yeah, thrilled. Um, after sort of losing in the ladies, I really wanted to take this title with Clinton. I knew we could do it. We're confident. Um, and I'm just thrilled to be uh, a world champion, a first world champion of another tournament. Uh, on paper, you're probably favourites, but uh, I mean, they pushed you all the way. Yeah, that being favourites on paper, they just puts more pressure on you, I think. Like, But they they started off like a steam train, 3 1 up, and thinking, like, we haven't really done much wrong here. Mm. I was thinking, are they, are they going to miss or? But, we took our chance when we got them, so I'm happy. It was probably fitting that it went to a deciding frame, a uh, fitting end to a great week. Yeah, fantastic. I mean, we had a couple of kicks early on in the first couple of frames as well, which didn't help us. Um, but, yeah, they played excellent, and it was a great tournament to be in. Thank you. Well, Deb Clint, you are the inaugural winners of the uh, World Mixed Pairs Championships. Congratulations. You. You, get, you get one to keep as well. It's like Christmas. There you go. Good to go.
Yeah. So that's just about it from us here uh, in Bradford. It's been um, a huge week for us, great week. Hope you've enjoyed the stream. We're all going to have a week off and uh, head to Thornaby for the uh, World Series qualifiers. And then at the end of this month, uh, we start uh, the record-breaking uh, IPA tour. So I uh, hope you can join us then. Hope you've enjoyed this week. and. Uh